I'm reinventing myself. I'm me and nobody else. Ooh, I can't help but smile. Hello everybody and welcome to another one of these things. I'm going to be calling this one the Buildings of Interest video and back there is a building of interest to me. Uh, it's the permanent building, I'll tell you a little bit more about it later. In this one I'm using the 9mm 2.8 from Laowa, probably one of the best lenses you can get for the APS-C system for doing architectural work. Anyway, uh, ambitious day today, you got a lot of buildings to cover, catch you later. Although a beautiful building, it's not why it's of interest to me. Back in the 90s, my sister and I used to work on a lot of film and television sets, and this was the only location in which we appeared together. It's the movie Maximum Risk from 1996 with Jean-Claude Van Damme. Old City Hall by E.J. Lennox, designed a lot of buildings in the city. And New City Hall by Vilio Revel, famous modernist Finnish architect. Also very popular for films. The Sentinel with Michael Douglas. The Four Seasons Center, home of the Canadian Opera Company and the National Ballet. The Canada Life Campus, you're not allowed to take photos here. The historic Georgian style Campbell House from 1822, which was moved to this location. One of my favorite buildings in the city. This is OCAD, or Ontario College of Art and Design, now called OCAD University. Why? Why not just change the C to a uh, U? One of the many mysteries of the city. Frank Gehry's contribution to the city, our Gallery of Ontario, covered in streetcar wires. The Umbra Concept Store, a company I wouldn't mind doing some work for actually. Met this guy Alex, super personable guy. Spent days painting these uh, faux cobblestones uh, because somebody kept parking on them. <laughs> Toronto Dominion Center, which my dad worked on as a carpenter, and it was also the office complex from American Psycho. TD Center again, and with some luck, this office worker stopped to look at her appearance in the black glass. Just love this shot. This is the BMO building, our first Canadian place. It's the tallest building in Canada, and my Uncle Rainer thought it would be cool to see what would happen if he threw a roll of toilet paper off the roof of it. Of course, the CN Tower, the tallest freestanding structure in Canada. The characters on the right from the Sky Dome. Who doesn't like trains and my dumb reflection in the glass? I don't know what this building is called, but I really do like the artwork. I really dig the way this building's supports are behind the glass. This is the very cool Roy Thompson Hall. Fans of the show The Boys may recognize it as the Bot Building. At least the bottom of it. Hey, here we are at my humble studio. Still my humble studio. I've been trying to sell this place for a while now. Toronto real estate market, not so great. Hard to complain though, I do have a home and a place to shoot these episodes. Finally, to explain the, uh, the title, there are very few alternatives to this lens uh, if you look at, uh, at full frame. Actually, within the APS-C space, there is another lens. It's the Nisi, Nisi, I'm not really sure how to say it. They've got a nine mil as well. Uh, that looks like a great lens as well, but it's a little bit bigger than this. I do like the form factor of this, although it is actually a little heavier than it looks. It's actually heavier than Sony's alternative, which is the 11mm f1.8. That uh, f1.8, although it is great that, you know, it's got autofocus, it's a Sony lens, uh, and it's an f1.8. Um, the only thing about that is that I really wouldn't be using the autofocus. That wider aperture doesn't really mean a lot to me uh, as well, so it's a little bit of a use case. Uh, when I'm shooting ultra wide, I'm usually wanting a deeper depth of field, so I'm uh, usually shooting um, 
at f5.6 or even smaller, often uh, between f8 and f11 actually. All that stuff that I shot yesterday was between f8 and f11 and I just set my focus once, didn't touch that focus dial at all after that uh, because when you're shooting at those apertures, you're pretty much in focus all the time. Uh, so, autofocus, not a big deal when you're shooting ultra wide when it comes to the architectural stuff. Uh, and uh, even indoors, although you have to kind of push it sometimes, sometimes I'll go to f5.6 uh, when I'm shooting indoors with this because of course with APS-C you're sometimes struggling for light a little bit. Has not been an issue at all, have been shooting uh, with this uh, for indoor stuff, uh, doing architectural stuff inside. Uh, anyway, so that's that argument there, but the other thing is 11 mil versus 9 mil. 9 mil is a 13 and a half uh, mil equivalent on full frame, and 11 is 16 and a half. Uh, that difference is huge. Every millimeter counts when you're talking ultra wide. Now, uh, 16 is a very popular ultra wide focal length for photographers. My friend Mark. Uh, he doesn't shoot any wider than 16. His ultra wide is a 16 and a lot of photographers feel that not going any wider than that is a little bit more natural looking and I understand that but if you're going from a 13 and a half equivalent to, um, to 16 and a half like the 11 mil Sony, um, it is quite a bit narrower and it's uh, it would be a bit of an adjustment. I really do like the flexibility of being able to crop in from that uh, wider focal length. And uh, it does make rooms a lot bigger looking when you're doing interiors and it certainly makes exteriors look a lot more dramatic as well. So uh, another argument for this and a reason it'd be very difficult to get rid of this lens. Uh, so. Why in the world wouldn't I go uh, with the with full frame then um, and um, allow us, uh, you know, full frame alternative because they've got a 9mm for full frame as well. It's a f5.6. Well, the thing is about that lens is that you can't screw filters onto the front and that's a bit of a, a deal breaker for me um, because I do use um, NDs uh, on all my lenses and uh, I like to be able to screw them onto the front and you can't do that with the full frame um, equivalent of that, the Lawa's uh, 9mm 5.6. And that goes for all the other full frame alternatives, really most of them uh, have that issue with not being able to screw filters onto the front. It's either that or they're, you know, they're too heavy or they are super expensive, or all of the above. So there you go, there's my argument for uh, APS-C and this lens, which is fantastic. So uh, oh, one thing you wanna watch out for is when you put this, um, uh, this little shade on here, make sure that it's turned uh, all the way on uh, or else you will get some vignetting because if it's not quite all the way on uh, these little pedals it being so wide these little pedals will get in the way and cause uh, some odd vignetting <laughs> in your frame anyway as usual i hope you guys got something out of this one um, if so please leave me a thumbs up if not that's okay too if you want to make sure you don't miss any of these uh, please consider subscribing and uh, turning those notifications on as well. Until next time, keep working to make your chosen idea a reality. All right, then peace.